It seems that today, in the modern Western world, everywhere you look in the mainstream media, there is an all-pervasive, girl power, boss babe agenda being pushed on every front. And if done effectively, I believe female empowerment is a great idea. I have a sister, and I of course want to see her reach her highest potential in life, both professionally and in terms of familial happiness. And if I have daughters in the future, I absolutely want that for them as well. Also, I've always been a fan of the compelling heroines from classic cinema like Ellen Ripley, Sarah Connor, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, and Princess Leia, just to name a few who are really interesting and really well done. However, I would argue that the way the modern mainstream media and cultural institutions are going about their agenda is actually doing the complete opposite of empowering the feminine. Throughout history, the divine feminine energy has been a beautiful, life-bringing, and powerful force that has pushed human civilization forward and is responsible for half, or perhaps even more than half, of all human progress. However, in just the past few decades, modern Western society has completely failed to nurture this divine and beautiful energy and has instead waged war upon it. One only has to look at the characters propped up by today's corporate media as the ideal heroines to see a number of examples of what I mean. The new wave of ideal heroines are often portrayed as arrogant, entitled, and condescending. They wield enormous amounts of unearned physical power without needing to go through the training, trials, and tribulations to earn said power. Furthermore, the plots of these modern movies and shows often turn the male protagonists into pathetic weaklings simply as a means of artificially elevating the female characters, as is seen with Finn and Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. In many ways, these new heroines are not embodying true feminine power at all, and in fact are actually embodying the worst traits of the dark masculine. Aggression, arrogance, entitlement, impetuousness, and an over-reliance on physical dominance to solve all problems are usually the traits of a male bully or villain. Thus, it is not difficult to see that there is a considerable lack of wisdom in the modern world, and as such, much of the population lacks a meaningful understanding of the divine feminine and just what makes it so unique and so powerful. These misguided culture creators then go on to imbue their characters with many negative masculine traits and then mistakenly believe that it is making them empowered and progressive when really they have lost sight of what has truly made women so uniquely powerful since the dawn of time. This video will explore the nature of the divine feminine energy in detail, the sacred yin to the masculine yang, and why it is a source of nearly infinite, though understated power, and why it is essential for everyone, both female and male alike, to cultivate and honor this energy. Although modern Western culture ostensibly prides itself on empowering women and the feminine, if you look closer, the entire culture is actually obsessed with a masculine approach to life, or the yang energy. From an early age, men, and now to an even greater degree, women, are encouraged to hustle, to be proactive, even to the point of aggressiveness, to be relentless in their pursuit of professional goals, to break through all obstacles, to be constantly busy and in a rush, to work hard and play hard, and to conquer the world. And yes, all of these mindsets are very positive in the proper contexts, especially when it comes to achieving worthy goals, but they represent only half of the picture of the human experience, and if focused on exclusively, lead to imbalance, which is certainly one of the reasons why modern culture has become so unhealthy, unhappy, and frankly, just exhausting. On the other hand, there is the feminine energy, also known as yin energy in ancient Chinese philosophy. Modern society frequently looks down upon this energy because it represents the passive, yielding, soft, and gentle complement to the yang energy. Modern society hence perceives it as weak. But I would argue that nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the ancient Chinese spiritual philosophy known as Taoism has always deeply revered the power of the divine yin energy and developed an entire system of thought and approach to life around it. Let's take a closer look at what the divine feminine energy is and just what makes it so special. The divine feminine energy is soft, flowing, and gentle. Modern society 
in its short-sightedness, only respects overt power and thus casts derision upon this approach to life. However, what is the element in nature that best embodies the characteristics of soft and flowing? Yes, it is water. And there is no better example of how the soft overcomes the hard and the gentle overcomes the rigid, as the Taoist sage Lao Tzu once stated. Over time, it is only water that has the ability to cut a path directly through a mountain. Water nurtures all life on earth and demonstrates sanguine beauty in the form of a forest brook, or it can crash as fearsome waves in the vast Pacific. It can never be destroyed, and even when subjected to fire, it turns into vapor, and then into clouds, and then into rain. Such is the power of the divine feminine. Think of sports. Yes, exerting massive effort and pushing yourself to the maximum definitely has an important role, especially for limited roles during training. However, an over-obsession with the yang energy in sports can lead to overtraining and injury. Interestingly, in weightlifting, it is actually during the rest periods between training sessions when the muscles actually grow back stronger. Furthermore, most mature and experienced athletes understand the importance of proper warm-ups and stretching, which are also representative of the yin energy. Lastly, many of the greatest athletes in history, like Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, understood that forcing and striving could only get you so far in the midst of a close game, and their best performances came when they entered the flow state, during which they became one with the game, and their actions were almost effortless. Of course, the divine feminine approach not only applies to sports and athletics, but also has powerful relevance when it comes to intellectual pursuits as well. The realm of logic has long been associated with the divine masculine, and there is no doubt that logic is an extremely useful mode of thinking, especially when solving engineering and physics problems and the like. However, logic definitely has its limits, especially when it comes to understanding interpersonal relationships and social dynamics, where empathy and emotional intelligence are far more useful. Furthermore, whereas logic is the realm of the divine masculine, it is intuition that is the realm of the divine feminine. Many great minds such as Einstein, Tesla, and Steve Jobs actually believed that intuition was more powerful than logical thinking and that many of their best insights came from intuition. Though intuition is a concept that is difficult to understand and modern society does not respect it or promote its use, in many ways it can be thought of as both subconscious and superconscious logic, the subtle whispers of your subconscious mind, your soul, and God. And thus, in so many ways, it transcends conscious logic. In my own life, I relied exclusively on logic up until my mid-twenties. However, I gained tremendous benefits from developing my intuition, and in fact, listening to my intuition actually saved the lives of more than one of my patients when I was a medical student and later a medical resident, stories that I may share in a later video. Next, let's take a look at modern pop culture. If characters like Captain Marvel and Admiral Haldo are extremely poor portrayals of the Divine Feminine, what character would be a prime example of embodying the power of the Divine Feminine? An obvious character who would come to the minds of many would be Lady Galadriel from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings saga. In Tolkien's original portrayal, she is an ancient, noble elf who is tremendously powerful. And in fact, in Tolkien's letters, he states that among the free peoples of Middle-earth, she is rivaled only by Gandalf and Elrond. This is easily seen when the entire Fellowship of the Ring is utterly awestruck by her mere presence. But throughout the Lord of the Rings books, she never wields an axe or a sword. She never yells or barks orders. She doesn't command charging armies. What is it that makes her so powerful? I would argue that it is because she demonstrates mastery over the entirety of the divine feminine powers. First of all, she is of course very beautiful, but it is so much more than that. It's the way she carries herself with timeless poise, elegance, and grace. Furthermore, she has always had a thirst for knowledge, and over the course of thousands of years has become tremendously learned, and she is renowned throughout Middle-earth for her goddess-like wisdom. She also has the ability to see into the hearts and minds of others, which corresponds with empathy 
emotional intelligence, and interpersonal intuition in our own world. In so many ways, the ability to understand others outside of yourself is a superpower with immense practical utility in everyday life and will get you much further than brute force ever will. She is also renowned for her ability to heal others, as is demonstrated when she healed Gandalf. Only in an unenlightened society is the ability to heal and restore life less valued than the overt power to wage war and conquer. In fact, Galadriel is always incredibly subtle with her powers in general, and never feels the need to show them off or use them to dominate those weaker than her, and thus the other characters never know how much of her abilities she keeps hidden from view. Yet another aspect of her character that is perfectly aligned with the Divine Feminine. This is why many Lord of the Rings fans are upset that Galadriel was portrayed as a warrior and military commander in Amazon's new series. First of all, it isn't true to the source material that Tolkien created. But furthermore, I think it fundamentally shows a lack of understanding of what makes Galadriel so powerful in the first place. By trying so hard to turn Galadriel into a badass boss babe that fits modern standards, they actually, ironically, made her weaker. To the truly wise, the ability to swing a sword and beat people up is actually a very primitive form of power. In the original trilogy, great warriors like Aragorn and Gimli defer immediately to Gladriel's wisdom and knowledge, and thus she wields unparalleled influence without lifting a finger, using measured words alone, and thus has certainly transcended the need to don armor and pick up a sword or a spear. In many ways, the modern Amazon portrayal depowers Galadriel by lowering her from a divine, goddess-like being of untouchable beauty, elegance, and wisdom to becoming a mere earthly warrior. Quite simply, they demoted her from a queen to a knight. And if Tolkien's Galadriel is the quintessential example of the divine feminine in the Western mythos, then in the collective Eastern mythology, this title may have to go to the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin, or Gunyam Posat in Cantonese. She is not only one of the most highly esteemed Buddhist saints, but in a broader sense, is worshipped throughout East Asia as the goddess of compassion. She is a prominent figure in the Chinese epic, Journey to the West, one of my favorite mythological stories, and one of the most influential works that has shaped the collective consciousness of the Asian nations. Kuan Yin is one of the most powerful beings in the entire saga, even greater than the Monkey King and the Heavenly Generals, who themselves shake the heavens when they engage in cosmic kung fu battles. And yet, she never once engages in physical combat during the story, and spends most of her time flying around upon a lotus flower and healing others with a magic willow branch. And yet, the forces of darkness always flee before her mere presence, simply because she radiates so much love, compassion, and divine light. Indeed, as a goddess who embodies the divine feminine, she has transcended the need for fighting. Lastly, it is very important to note that the creative energy is an essential aspect of the divine feminine. The greatest artists in history have therefore utilized their divine feminine energies to create their masterworks. Da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Mozart were all men who understood how to properly utilize the infinite power of the feminine energies within their beings. Even a man like Steve Jobs, who was famous for being hard-driving, ambitious, and even brash and callous, also had vast amounts of feminine energy that he drew upon to create his products. Of course, he also had tremendous amounts of masculine energy, and it was this striving and conquering energy that helped him push his teams to accomplish incredible technical feats on schedule. But if you study the products he created, whether it be the iPhone, MacBook, or iPad, they all embody a zen-like feminine beauty, which is much of what makes them such sought-after status symbols. The same is true of luxury sports cars like Aston Martins, Porsches, and Ferraris. These cars all embody a sensual elegance and beauty, combined of course with the remarkable horsepower under the hood, and it is this timeless combination of masculine engineered power with feminine, artful grace and elegance which makes these cars sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars each at the very least. In many ways, the masculine energy 
goes forth and conquers, whereas the feminine energy attracts. Modern Western society, in its vapidity, only respects obvious forms of power and encourages both women and men to acquire what they want by breaking down barriers and conquering, not recognizing that attracting what you want is a far more sophisticated method of gaining your ambitions and also requires far less energy expenditure. And of course, this feminine creative power also applies to the most important aspect of existence, life itself. The magnificence of the divine feminine energy can be seen all around you on a spring day as young leaves begin to grow on the trees and the flowers bloom and of course, the miracle of a new child brought into this world. The sight of new flowers, sublime ocean waves, or a curious and energetic young child brings inspiration and hope to even the most weary of adults. Thus, in many ways, the divine feminine is life itself. Sadly, modern Western culture has ignored and looked down upon the divine feminine energy for decades now and ironically pushes women to be more and more like men rather than embracing and developing their own unique powers. Furthermore, society also does not promote the positive and divine masculine, but instead promotes either weaklings and cowards or immature caricatures of masculinity via celebrities, ironically, all while decrying toxic masculinity. Thus, this is much of the reason why modern society has become a death culture in so many ways. I will conclude this video by saying that I believe men, women, and human civilization as a whole will benefit tremendously when the divine feminine energy is respected, honored, and cultivated. Yes, even men can benefit from developing and honoring their own yin energy. And no, this does not mean following the modern mainstream advice of becoming an effete pushover. Masculine and feminine polarity is what makes romantic relationships and families thrive. And if you are a man in this world, it is very important to develop your divine masculine energy and make it your dominant energy. However, know that you will also benefit from developing the divine feminine qualities such as compassion, empathy, patience, intuition, prudence, and artistry, which will actually make you a stronger and fully actualized man and serve to complement your divine masculine qualities. If you are a woman, know that even though modern mainstream culture has ignored, neglected, and even disrespected the divine feminine energy in recent decades, know that your divine feminine energy is not a weakness, but is in actuality a unique superpower. Throughout history, feminine beauty, elegance, and grace has had the power to leave even the most fearsome kings and generals awestruck and humbled. It has served as the energetic muse that has inspired the greatest works of art, music, and invention in human history. And though it may be the steady masculine logistics and motors that keep our modern economic machine turning and is thus necessary to maintain survival, it is only beauty and love that make life worth living. In so many ways, the divine feminine is life itself. It creates life, it nurtures life, and it makes life thrive. And thus, to honor the divine feminine is to embrace life itself. Thank you for watching, everyone.